Welcome back to HPL. And it all comes down to this. Is Super JJ going to move to 3-0? Is Dog going to move to 4-0? We're about to find out. Yeah, guys, get out there on Twitter. Use that hashtag HPL. Let everyone know who you're supporting and who you think is going to win this fifth and final deciding game between these two teammates. Complexity facing off in two undefeated players so far in HPL. They have been going absolutely perfect in these games. We've seen two lethals finalized on the last card for exact damage. Yeah, this match has just been crazy back and forth, and we're about to get into that fifth game. Here we go, the deciding game. Super JJ versus Dog. Man, I am so hyped to see know, exactly I'm so what excited. they're do in this last game. This has been beautiful. And Super JJ, there's that Assassin's Blade that you had mentioned. I have to believe this is he's running it back with this exact same deck. Yeah, and Dog, I, I saw a Haunted Creeper. Oh, we're moving Whoa. into the Hunter. You talk about a matchup that could be dangerous for this deck. I think that turn one Leper Gnome is the last thing Super JJ wanted to see. Now he does have a uh, coin plus SI agent to help, you know, clear up some shenanigans, but Dog's hand is pretty resilient against it. He has a Leper Gnome and he has double Haunted Creeper. Yeah, plus the Wolf Rider to back that up. I mean, this is going to be a blistering start from Dog. If Super JJ doesn't find himself in a position where he can uh, pick up like maybe a Fan of Knives or a Blade Flurry, he's gonna fall behind very quickly. Yeah, great draw from uh, Dog here too, getting this Animal Communion, but I wanna talk about this play that Super JJ's made in turn one. I love this turn one South Sea deckhand because he's probably not going to want to take the damage it takes to kill, uh, take six from this Leper Gnome if he were to, uh, you know, make a, make a knife and attack it. And this sets up a good turn two from him where he can coin SI Agent if, you know, Dog were to play another minion that's a, a good one for the SI Agent to target, you know, if he didn't play something like Haunted Creeper. Yeah, it looks like he's actually going to start pushing here too. Not a favorable trade into the Haunted Creeper, so just going to favor the pressure in this situation. Dog continues to add great cards to his hand, and it looks like right away he already wants to start trading. Yeah, he's going to get in, take care of the South Sea deck game. He's going to make two two power minions here. Uh, Super JJ, if he wants to start cleaning these up with his life toy, he's going to be taking extra damage here. Yeah, I mean, I really know what the choice. He's got to clear yeah, he's off got to this Leoc. So, yeah. uh, SI7 agent going to be left at one health. Good for him. Uh, but really, no, not much action after this. He's got sprint. He's got he's got all he the minions he needs. Bot, though, yeah, he does have all the minions important. he needs. He just doesn't have the utility to mix with it. So is this pressure from Dog going to be too much? I mean, you couple in Savannah High Main plus the five damage that's going to be taken from Wolf Rider and Hero Power next turn. This well, is really starting to look bad. Backstab was a pretty good draw here. He needed to draw something that he could either prep into or backstab here this turn to get an extra minion off this Violet Teacher. Start getting on the board because he needs these one ones to help take care of this Haunted Creeper tokens that are going to be left over once. He takes care of it next turn. But Dog picked up a Savannah High Main here. It's going to be a pretty good turn six for him. Now he's going to have an Animal Companion, another pretty good draw for him here. But is he going to Wolf Rider and use his hero power here? These are all big uh, decisions here for Dog. Yeah, it also matters what this trap is a lot. I mean, how he, if he attacks his 1 1, you know, I think there's a much better chance that it's something like Freezing Trap in this situation. But if he just goes straight for the dome, I mean, he may be foregoing all of this and seeing exactly what it is. You know, if he wants to keep Super JJ guessing, I would suspect to believe he wants to attack this 1 1, regardless of what's going to happen here. Yeah, you see Dog shake his head. He re I think he really wanted a Huffer there that turn. Yeah, I think he wanted pretty much anything other than Leoc yeah. uh, that turn. But, you know, Leoc's not the worst in this situation, and it is going to be Freezing Trap. So Super JJ forced to develop uh, one of his minions this turn and then leave it over to Dog to start pushing damage here. He needs something like Sap or Eviscerate to really get back in this game because this Savannah High Main is going to be so much pressure. Yeah, you may see Dog actually for Ghost of Anaheim in this turn, and you probably, there's a good chance that he either Pilot Shredder uses his hero power or... Wolf Rider uses your power because he starts to fall behind if uh, Super JJ has something like Sap. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be worried about that, about the, you know, the five other cards that are unknown in Super JJ's hand. If he finds himself facing down something like Sap, it could be a disaster situation for him. Uh, so there is a chance, I think, that he just Wolf Riders and takes out this Azure Drake, starts pushing with what he has, but he also has the option of Pilot Shredder. But man, I got to believe that with the way that you've played this game and with how many cards Super JJ has left, that Savannah Hyman, if it goes unchecked, the game is just yours. Yeah, if the Savannah Hyman does go unchecked, it's great, but you're gonna see Dog weigh his options here, figure he's gonna take his time. We've seen this a lot from him in HBO. He really takes his time on these really important turns because he needs to figure out not only what's in Super JJ's hand, but how he's gonna play the next couple of turns. Because if he doesn't play high main this turn, he doesn't have a really good play with high main next turn. He's gonna float a mana. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be the deciding factor. For I him. certainly think it is too. And, and even can still considering trading off with this Azure Drake. I mean, if he sells something like Eviscerate and then a Fan of Knives afterwards, that could clear up the Savannah high main. But I like following through on the pressure and really putting it to Super JJ. Force him to have the right answers yeah. to your cards. Yeah, it's really hard to pass up on four damage. Now this prep sprint, he's looking for sap. Yeah, such an important four cards, and four cards is a lot to be That's, getting through this position. Backstab, not too bad either. Out of the last one, he did not pick up the sap here. Pretty big dodge from Dog here. Yeah, I mean, he does have Eviscerate to start checking what's going on here. 
Uh, so this pressure going to be stifled quite a bit, but still pressure nonetheless. I mean, every single point of damage is going to add up to a lot at the end of this game. So a blessing that he does have an answer to Savannah Hyman, though, in the least amount. Yeah, it, it is an answer to Savannah Jaime, but he can't get this Leoc off the board. It's still pressure. I mean, he is going to be able to get this Leoc off the board with the Adrake. He's going to be able to take a lot of the damage away from Dog. Sorry, I almost misspoke there for a yeah. second. So uh, at this point now, it's a matter of whether or not Dog wants to commit, because when your opponent's just drawn this many cards, very high likelihood that they have answers to start clearing your board out. So the fact that uh, Super JJ was able to pick up a way to check the Savannah Jaime, it just that was the most important turn of the game, I think. Yeah, I really think you're going to see Dog take care of this Adrake here, but he's going to start weaving in hero powers every time that he can for the rest of the game. He's make sure that he gets in this damage. He doesn't know that Super JJ has an anti kill bot. And you know what? Super JJ is clawing his way back into this game right yeah, now. Assassin's Blade actually going to be pretty important in this matchup too. Uh, but it's a matter, can he afford to take this much damage from that Assassin's Blade to make sure that he can start checking what's going on on the board? I mean, that's really a big point of this. And just like you said, going to start weaving in hero powers. He's got Freezing Trap to tech the next minion and Wolf Rider to continue that damage push. Yeah, and depending on what next the minion is, if it's anti kill bot, this Freezing Trap is kind of going to be, you know, left on the back burner. Yeah, I mean, I suspect this is one of those turns where he may feel like it's necessary to play uh, that anti kill bot to get There's things that going. Sap, sap is last such turn. an important draw to keep this pilot at Shredder from absolutely absolutely raining terror on him as well. He had no efficient way to deal with it this turn, but now he's got an option. Yeah, this, I mean, it, it is one of his better turns here. It's just anti killbot sap, but you know, he's gonna make sure there's nothing else to do. He has a ton of options here, but yeah, he is just gonna go with the anti killbot sap. It's really hard to pass up on this, this turn. It's a huge tempo play, plus you gained eight life. That is so much against these aggro uh, hunter decks. Yeah, second wolf rider picked up for dog now, so. Uh, you, you know, this is really, again, the sort of the matter is he's got to get this pilot shredder to deal some damage in this matchup because he's so low on cards at this point. So the fact that he's investing into this is ac absolutely no surprise. And then again, moving forward, the fact that this is charge damage, he's free to continue to weave in hero powers and make sure that he keeps the maximum amount of pressure that he possibly can, but not able to play this freezing trap. That's a very important note thing uh, for this turn. Yeah, now being able to play the freezing trap kind of hurts Dog going forward. Is he not being able to develop enough cards out of his hand to like have very efficient turns and use all of his mana? But this is the last minion that you want to freezing trap in this game. You do not want to give him another anti kill bot. Yeah. So now that he's been holding on to so many cards, is Super JJ thinking about something like Unleash the Hounds? Now he's got Violet Teacher and Eviscerate this turn to take out what this piloted Shredder uh, can offer this turn. That will leave Dog with just one point of damage on board. But is he going to be afraid of maybe making too many tokens and giving Dog an opportunity to to push for damage with other cards that may otherwise be kind of dead? Absolutely. I, I firmly believe that in Super JJ's mind, he probably believes that Dog has an Unleash the Hounds already and is going to try to play around that as much as he can for the rest of this game. So you're going to maybe see him make you know, what might look a little suboptimal or a weird play, but anything he does that's a little out of the ordinary, that's what he has in the back of his mind right now, is he's trying not to take extra damage off of uh, Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, but he also wants to keep this threat on board, too. He does have to worry about ending this game at some point. Can't just keep control for as long as possible. Ooh. Shielded Minibot is one of the last things I think that Super JJ wanted to see. He did not want to make this kind of investment into a minion, and you can see it right here. Just going to start going for pressure. We got a race here, and with two, for, with two Wolf Riders in hand, this is looking great for Dog. Yeah, he just picked up Lotheb as well. That is wow. a back-breaking spell against Rogue most of the time. JJ has a ton of minions in his hand, but you're going to see Dog really, really push the action this turn. Yeah, turning up the heat this turn. That was a great draw from Dog. Such a good one from him. And Super JJ might be in a position where he feels like a counter Lotheb is really his only way to, to kind of sustain this board position. I mean, he can still play Blade Flurry for seven mana, but that's only four damage right now. And he's got the Haunted Creeper, the Lotheb sitting at five health, and the Divine Shield on one of these minions. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble now. That turn turned around very, very quickly. That Shielded Minibot was just perfect for Dog. And then the Lotheb draw coupled with that just might be too much for Super JJ here. Yeah, I mean, really not the right mix of uh, spells and minions that he wanted, and that's something that's very important to this rogue deck. Yeah, these, this Goblin Auto Barber not doing a whole lot this game. It's been in his hand almost the whole time. He had a Violet Teacher get returned to his hand. He can't play the Blade Fury this turn. I mean, he can, but it's for like almost his entire turn yeah. here, and it's not going to get as much through as he wants. He's still going to be left over with a few minions, uh, depending on how he uses his antique heal bot. Not a lot of super great options for, for uh, Super JJ here. Yeah, I'm going to take his time and try to find the best line of play, but just very short uh, on, on what those lines of play are. Wow, is he really going to have to attack this Lotheb? That's, I mean, that's great for Dog. He gets five points of damage out of it. Yeah, so gonna he's, yeah, he's going to go with the Blade Flurry this turn, but again, he's going to be facing down four points of pressure. Uh, he's going to use it with the Goblin Water Barber. Love this. 
Um, nope, he's going to be facing on two points of pressure. Decides to take that one point to make sure the Haunted Creeper's clear. Yeah, out. I like this play from him. Yeah, but he doesn't have any heal left, so this is a matter of time. Like, if Dog draws all the right cards wow, here, what a lots draw of pressure here. coming out. Six, Six eight, eight, nine, ten, ten damage, one eight. off lethal this turn. And, uh, you know, this is probably the turn to just go ahead and unleash the Freezing Trap. Even if your opponent can get benefit off of that, you just get an extra charge on the Eagle Horn Bow. So Super JJ needs to draw a heal here. This game is completely done. Yeah, we need an anti kill bot off the top from Super JJ here, or Dog is going to move to 4 0 and win over his teammate here. Sprint, I mean, he's. I, I, this isn't even enough. Even if you draw something like Earth and Ring Farsi here, he's just facing down too much damage. This game's over. What a game from Dog and Super JJ here. Back and forth at the beginning, Dog was out to a great start. Super JJ looked to have restabilized, but that shielded mini bot coming off of the pilot shredder into the top deck of uh, Lothab there was just too much for JJ to handle. Dog moves on to 4-0 here in HPL. Yeah, we've constantly throughout this match seen both of these guys try to apply pressure to their opponents and get them to blink first. Even in that spot where Super JJ didn't have an efficient way to clear the board, he chose to go to the face damage and try to represent a big burst in his range. Dog didn't bite on that one and instead pushed right back himself, and that was the last thing that Super JJ wanted to see. It was definitely the last thing Super JJ wanted, and it ended up being his demise. You saw Dog take a win here against his teammate. He's up to 4 0. Super JJ still doing pretty well. It's his first loss here in HPL. And again, it's early, but Dog is quickly showing why he's one of the favorites here to win all of HPL. Yeah, plus his loss went to the full five games, too. Yeah. So, you know, it did the best that you could, but just not enough, guys. You can head over to pvplive.net and see for yourself exactly how these guys have played so far. They're a combined six and one within complexity right now. And you can go check out the strategies they've chosen and, more importantly, how they've played them so far here in HPL. When we come back, we're going to have that interview with Dog and get some of his insight into this strategy and how he tackled this matchup versus Super JJ. So don't go anywhere, guys. When we come back, that interview is getting underway. You're watching Hearthstone on PvP.